So we have the vertical tail aft of the CG, distance LT. And we have a rudder, positive rudder, just like that. And positive side slip is defined like that. When it gets back to the tail, it could be reduced, the angle could be reduced by the sidewash sigma, so we have to add that in. And that will be the angle of attack of the tail that generates a force times a moment arm. And so we get a net moment from the rudder and the side slip. And we had developed a formula for that. So we had the yawing moment of the fin this is the lift of the fin times LF, and we define the lift of the fin in this direction like that. And so that's gonna produce a negative moment. Let's see. No, I did it the other way, didn't I? Oh, I got it wrong again. I'm trying to keep track because I switched a little bit from what I had on my paper last time. So we've actually got this, right? There we go. So that produces a negative yaw, which is that way because of the right hand rule. <clears throat> got it. <clears throat> and then the lift of the fin, we calculate as lift coefficient times one half rho V of the fin, so the velocity that you see back here, times that. And then we calculate the CL of the fin as The angle of the lift curve slope times beta minus sigma plus the lift curve slope of the rudder times the rudder deflection. And so like everything else, aerodynamic forces and moments are generated from lift coefficient so we get a lift curve slope, and then this is the effective lift of the rudder. And so the positive beta here, when plugged in all the way up here, it's going to give us a positive yawing moment for positive stability, and we'll see that in a minute. And it turns out that a positive rudder gives you a negative yawing moment, just by definition. All right, so we're gonna put all this together. Um, this is gonna go up here. We're gonna turn this into a coefficient and then we're gonna plug in the lift coefficient and carry on from there. So we're gonna take the formula NF times we're gonna plug in for the LF.
And you can still look at it and go, yeah, this is the force. And this is the moment arm. <clears throat> so that's a moment. And then we turn it into a coefficient by the definition of the yawing moment coefficient. We divide by one half rho v squared of the airplane divided by the area of the wing because that's how we defined our going moment coefficient. And remember we put B here. And so over here we get we're going to divide by that, right? And so this gives us yawing moment coefficient of the fin. In terms of the lift coefficient, and then the one half row cancels out that because it's possible the velocity at the fin is different than the free stream, we're gonna keep that in there. And then we get this collection of terms. And remember when we were dealing with the horizontal tail, we had something like that and we called it V sub H because we got tired of writing it all the time. Here we're gonna call this V sub V. This is the vertical tail. Volume ratio. And we say volume ratio, why? Because it's feet squared times a distance, so that's feet to the third. And on the bottom you have feet squared times a distance, it's feet to the third. Well, it's kind of like volumes, although it's not a volume of like a box or a sphere. So again, let's switch back to the other screen just for a second. And you look at that formula we just derived, or you look at all of this stuff, and you go, well, that's pretty complicated, right? So what makes it complicated is really easy. It's force times distance. But just like for the horizontal tail and everything else, what complicates it is our model for the aerodynamic force. That's it. So I'm not blaming aerodynamics for making it complicated. That's just life with air flowing past lifting surfaces, and that's what we have to do. All right, so then we want to plug in for CLF. And so we get a minus, and then we get a minus AF times beta minus sigma. And we're going to do something with sigma here for a minute. So that's our lift model for CLF. And then we're going to plug in a typical sidewash model. Just like we had a downwash model, we say that the sidewash is some constant value plus how the sidewash changes with beta. Just like for the downwash model, we had. because we know that as you increase angle of attack on the wing, the wing tip vortices get stronger and stronger. And so you get more downwash with more angle of attack. So with the side wash, the more you're coming in from the side, you get flow coming around the fuselage in weird ways. And so you could get more or less side wash with respect to beta. Typically this is small because the airplane is symmetrical. 
So if the airplane's symmetrical and you have zero beta, then the flow is symmetrical around the fuselage and you get no sidewash at zero beta. So typically it's small, so usually we say it's zero. Again, you can look at this and say, it's force times distance. This is the aerodynamic force. And the distance, the moment arm is buried inside that V sub B. And so from this thing, we get the two effects that we're looking for. We get the yaw stability of the fin. And it's the derivative of that thing with respect to beta. So we get, we don't get anything from the rudder because that's not stability. The beta shows up in these two places. And so we get a nice formula for the stability derivative. How does the yawing moment change with respect to beta? Let me separate that out. This is this part here. So while we're looking at this, if I wanted to calculate the rolling moment due to the beta, how would I do that? What would be different? This is the yawing moment due to beta. Let's go back over to the other board. I had the yawing moment arm here times the force, right? So if I wanted to know a rolling moment, what do I need? Here's my airplane, there's no wing because we don't need it. Not to fly, we just don't need to look at it. Beta's cut. Yawing moment like that. What causes the rolling moment? It's that height, right? So it's pushing here, it's gonna roll that way. So if I wanted to get a rolling moment from this thing here, all that would change is this, and everything else is the same. And we'll go through that. I don't think we'll get to it today. Um, and then we have to make sure that we get the sign correct. And the, here's our rolling moment due to beta. Moment arms changed. Which way is it rolling? pushing this way, right? It's gonna roll that way. So we need to make sure that the sign is correct. In fact, almost all the time when I do these derivations, like for CN beta here, when I'm done, I look at this final formula and I go, does it give me the correct thing for the picture I drew? If I have positive beta, does this give me positive yaw? Because from the picture I drew, it should, right? It should push the tail to the left, which swings the nose around to the right, which is positive. And I look here and I go positive slope. This is less than one, positive. That's squared, it's gonna be positive. As long as the vertical tail is behind, then I get positive uh, yaw. So looking at this formula, positive LF, that means vertical tail aft of CG gives positive CN beta, which is stable. Why? Because that yaw is in the direction I'm back on that board, right? Yeah. 
I'm, I get yaw in the direction, side slip's coming in like this. I want to yaw in the direction to reduce that side slip. It's going to push the tail into the side slip, and that reduces the side slip. Again, that's static stability. We get something happening that will tend to reduce the disturbance. Oh, we were talking about roll. How about roll due to side slip? We said it's going to push the tail. It's going to roll this way. Is that good or bad? Or we don't care. It's a side effect. We'll talk about that more later. All right, from this formula, we can get the effect of the rudder on yaw. Why? Because we left it in here. Where'd my formula go? Did I erase it? I got to put it back here. So let's get that back up there. There's my lift curve slope times my angle. There's my rudder deal. Yeah, I got it all. So we took the derivative of this with respect to beta to get the beta effect. The rudder power is the derivative of this with respect to rudder. Rudder shows up there, so the derivative just comes from the second part. Like that. Looks like positive rudder produces negative yaw if LF is positive, that is aft of CG, which is where we put it for stability, right? So positive rudder gives negative yaw. Is that good? Bad? Multiple choice question, good, bad? Don't care, because it's Monday. Good? Anybody vote for bad? Anybody vote for don't care? Let's get back to the picture. Positive rudder gives negative yaw. Why? Tails behind the CG. Totally, yeah, because the rudder causes the lift that way and gives negative yaw. And it's because we just said that that's positive rudder. So it's not a good or a bad, and it's not really a don't care, because we do care what the rudder does. But it's just an artifact of the fact that we said we'll positive rudders that way. <clears throat> so the, the point of this thing is that yaw stability is totally tied into the yawing moment due to beta, and that rudder does not provide stability. Because the pilot controls the rudder. So the pilot can make the rudder go left, the pilot can make the rudder go right, the airplane will yaw to the left, the airplane will yaw to the right at the whim of the pilot. The stability comes from the reaction of the airplane to the airflow. So beta is yaw stability and yaw control is rudder. So make sure in your mind, keep that separate. Just like when we talked about pitch stability, pitch stability was CM alpha. The pitching, the, the pitching moment in response to a change in airflow. An elevator didn't provide stability, it just provided pitch control. So again, I want to make sure you keep those two things separate. 
Stability is response to airflow. Control is in response to pilot inputs on the surfaces. Uh, one more comment, because this is directly related to what you're being asked to do in the homework. Um, if I ask you to calculate the rudder, the rolling moment due to rudder, instead of which screen are we on? Okay, over here. So if I said we wanted the rolling moment due to rudder, same thing we just talked about for stability, you change the moment arm and that's the only thing you change in the whole derivation. <clears throat> so for homework number three, you go through and you repeat the exact same thing we just did today, but you change the moment arm from the yawing moment arm to the vertical rolling moment arm and that's it. Because roll uses that moment arm and yaw uses this moment arm. It's just the, the physics. So recap, yaw is the first lateral directional flight that we've looked at. Yaw stability is we want the airplane to yaw into the side slip to reduce it. Check. Rudder's there to control the yaw, not to control the response to the airflow, but just so the airplane can yaw the airplane. Okay, now we wanna to switch to, to roll stability or roll stiffness. So this is the other axis. This has different aspects. The wing contributes to this a lot as does the vertical tail. Um, and really the way, the best way to think about this is bank angle stability. Because bank angle is related to roll. And so we want to know if the airplane is banked like that, if, if you get a disturbance that banks the airplane, what do we want the airplane to do? And it's, this is totally tied to something called CL beta which is the change in rolling moment coefficient with respect to beta. So we need to define CL. It's the rolling moment divided by one half rho V squared S and B again, because it's lateral directional. A triple equal sign here. There, that's just definition. There we go. So the best way to do this is with the foam airplane. There's actually two effects that are two ways to think about this. Uh, number one is more of a static effect. And it's different than static stability. It's just statics versus dynamics of the flight. And the other is a dynamic effect. So let's get out the wing. Make sure I'm on camera for the zoom folks. So here's an airplane flying along. 
like this, I've exaggerated the angle of attack. So we're moving in this direction like that. And something causes the airplane to bank like that. I'm gonna make it extreme. Let's say we roll all the way to this way and we're moving like that. Do you see the side slip happening? Right, the angle of attack, something disturbs the airplane and it's sliding sideways. Now, if we bank this much, we're in big trouble. So hopefully it happens just a very small amount, but the angle of attack gets converted to side slip. So what we've seen here, for this static effect is if we get a bank angle disturbance, disturbance, we get some positive side slip. And now we have to decide what do we want the airplane to do in response to that. So fundamentally, the bank angle disturbance is what we need to fix. Because of the bank angle, we get some side slip. So we've banked this way, we're getting side slip. What, which way do we want the airplane to roll? Back upright. So is that positive or negative rolling moment? We've got to think hard. Let's see, thumb out the nose. That's right, so it's negative roll. So when the Positive side slip, we want the airplane to roll in the negative direction. And that's why we want CL beta. Let's see, let's write it up here. CL beta, we want this to be negative. So we want it to, to roll back upright. Or you can think about it as you want to roll away from the side slip. So you can memorize that. You can say, I want the airplane to roll away from beta and I want it to yaw into beta, but then you got to remember the into and away from and which one it goes with and all that, right? So you're better off visualizing or drawing a picture of the airplane in a side slip and the yaw will, you can see obviously that the yaw is going to go into the side slip and that the, the bank angle like I described here the, sorry, the bank angle is going to cause a side slip and then rolling away from that gets you rid of it. But even better yet, I think a way to remember this is the dynamic effect. Still going to get a positive side slip. But let's say that we're flying along, whether we're at a big angle of attack or not, it doesn't matter. We get a bank angle disturbance. So we're flying along, we get a bank angle disturbance. Which way is the airplane going to move? It's going to keep going forward, but gravity is now acting downward, right? So the airplane is going to start to fall. Because the lift vector is not fully up against gravity. Now the lift vector is acting partially that way. So the airplane is going to fall. You get positive side slip, and you want to roll back upright. I think that's an easier way to remember because it's natural. You look at your mental image of the airplane like this, it's gonna fall, and so you want it to roll back up, right, which is negative. Make sense? Hopefully. So both cases, both ways to think about this is you want the positive beta to yield a negative rolling moment. And there, there are two major pieces of the airplane. Is that spelled right? Come on, somebody help me out. It's Monday. That's right. Somehow I'm thinking the E doesn't belong there. Wow. The two major, major pieces that cause this or that do this is wing dihedral. You would think if I could spell dihedral, I could spell pieces, huh? And the vertical tail being above 
the CG. So wing dihedral is an angle of the wing that makes it not straight across. And you see that in some airplanes, right? You have wings like that. And so if you look at that, wind coming in from the side is gonna push up on this wing and bank it that way. And wind coming in from the side is gonna push down on the other wing and cause it to bank away from the side slip. So the wing dihedral effect is actually the biggest one. How are we done on time? Oh, we've still got some time. So let's see, we did all this. And we can draw a picture of the wing dihedral effect. It's easy to see. If you draw an airplane from the behind view, the aft view, Oh, okay. What does it say? If your MCAS is crashing planes, just give it a good bank. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who came up with that. That L is used for rolling moment as well as lift. Again, you just have to keep track of whether you're doing longitudinal or lateral directional. Um, let's see, we're over on this board. So sometimes to keep them different, this would be lift. Gosh, okay. And then for rolling moment, you use a script L. And again, remember where this comes from is that the moments for the axes are labeled L, M, and N, where this is rolling moment, pitching moment, yawing moment. So that's where the L came from. And I don't know, I guess you could go back to 300 years ago, 200 years ago when somebody decided this. And if you invent time travel and are able to go back and complain about this, you probably don't need to worry about complaining about this because you'll be a billionaire. Or you'll go back and change history and then you find out you weren't born, right? <laughs> All that stuff happens. So everything I've learned is don't go time traveling back because who knows what's going to happen. But it makes for good movies. All right, so let's see what else is in chat. What was the second point? Oh, vertical field. Okay, they got that. All right, so here's the dihedral effect. So this is an aft view. This is what's called the dihedral angle. It's a capital gamma. And the vertical tail is like here. And so with a positive side slip, we've got wind coming in partially from the right side because that's what we call the positive side slip. This is an aft view, so we're looking at it from behind. So you can see if the wind's coming in like this, you're gonna get more lift over here because there's wind pushing on the bottom of that wing. And over here, the side slip will push on the top of the wing and so you'll get less lift over here. More lift on the right, less lift on the, less lift on the left. And here, we're, let's use the script L, you're gonna get a negative rolling moment. So that's the dihedral effect. And if you go even beyond that, you're gonna say, well, we're gonna get more drag here and less drag here because more lift usually leads to more drag, right? And so we'd actually yaw due to the side slip, some from the wing effect, but we're not gonna talk about that now. It's just a minor effect. 
One question I will ask though is, you're looking at that picture and we said, okay, we got the dihedral and we got the side slip. And we're gonna get more lift on the one side and less lift on the other side. And we're gonna bank the correct direction to get us out of the bank, right? What if we're stalled? Let me draw the lift curve slope for the wing. The right here, there's not stalled, here's stalled. That says if you increase the angle of attack when you're stalled, you actually get less lift. Because the angle of attack goes up even more, the wing stalls even more and you get less lift. So if you're stalled, look at what happens. You get less lift due to the side slip. And maybe you unstall this wing and so you get more lift. Is that gonna roll the airplane in the correct direction to roll back upright? It's not because now we got side slip coming in like here, it unstalls that wing, this wing stalls even more and you bank more into it, which means you get more side slip, which means you bank even more and that's when you end up in a spin. So that's why stall spin accidents happen is that a lot of these stability parameters actually flip sign when you're stalled and cause you to go even more unstable instead of become stable. And the same thing happens with the rudder effects. If you're stalled, you get all that stall wash coming off of the, the weight coming off the wing and it blankets the rudder and the tail and you don't get the yaw stability that you want as well because of the stall. All right, well, that's a little bit more advanced stuff, but fundamentally we now know the basics of making an airplane. We have to do pitch trim, lift equals weight, pitching moment equals zero. That's just so that we can keep flying. And then we need pitch stability like that. And now we've just learned the other two basics. There is no roll or yaw trim because we don't have to generate any force to counteract weight. Everything's symmetrical. That's an R. But we need to make sure we have CN beta positive the yaw into the side slip and the roll needs to be away from the side slip. And if you have those fundamental things, you can trim the airplane, you have pitch stability, roll and yaw stability, you can build an airplane and it will fly and you won't die. So the last thing we're gonna to have to look at is the vertical tail effect on this CL beta thing. Because we've talked about dihedral and that's a big player in the dihedral effect. Um, I think we're close to out of time, right? Yeah, let's call it here. There's a couple other minor effects and then the vertical tail is a big effect. So we'll talk about that next time. Okay, we're done for today.